So, well, the first question I ask to everyone is um, uh, if you could please introduce yourself uh, for all the people that do not know you. Sure. So, uh, my name is B-Kill. I am the uh, in-game GM of Snake. I've been running this guild for uh, the better part of the entire game. It's a... I originally started playing this game in uh, the beta when it first came out. And uh, outside of that, uh, myself in real life, uh, my name is Brendan. I live in Southern California. I work a lot. <laughs> I, I, actually, I actually work a job where I have to travel across the country uh, every week, essentially. And it's to do a whole lot of middle management, essentially. <laughs> I don't know if I can actually say much more than that, but... Okay. You don't need to dox yourself. <laughs> so uh, I'm wondering how you are managing to do, I guess, three full-time jobs. You're leading a guild, playing video, and uh, traveling. How are you actually able to do all of this? I think one of the most interesting things about leading the guild, uh, and I'll, I'll start with just the one piece of leading the guild right now, is uh, you can treat it a whole lot like uh, leading people... Uh, you know, at a normal job, right, is you have the ability to delegate different responsibilities after out to different people and then, uh, you know, incentivize them for that and do things with that that uh, essentially makes it so that I can have the guild get ran while also not having to be here and run everything myself. You know, there, there's been a lot of times just in the normal life of the guild where I've had to do a a large share of the, I guess, the, the lifting or the load in order to maintain the guild, because it is a lot of work. But uh, I'd say a majority of the time, uh, we always have at least about uh, four or five people that are active enough to keep everything going. What attributes the strength of a guild? Is it the leadership or is it the members? Who do you think is, uh, is actually running things in a guild? Uh, so I very strongly believe that... Uh, Leadership is the most important thing in the guild. I think, especially in a guild like ours, I think that uh, you have to have that sense of community, right? And if you don't have that sense of community, right, then uh, there's no reason for anyone to want to stay around in a guild like this, right? Uh, you know, one of the, one of the interesting things is uh, when you're interviewing Choice, right, and you're kind of asking him. Mm -hmm. why snake and what's the reason for snake you know he's not even in the guild 90 percent of the time right you know what does that even mean right is he even actually in snake but that's uh that's where most of the things we incentivize right most of the things we want people to be doing is actually just you know be part of the community be hanging out in the guild and be together okay. but in order for that to work uh, what i've found at least in my experience is that they need uh, the leadership to be uh, pushing that right to be thinking that same way and to be active about that so you'll find that most of the leadership in the guild the active leadership in the guild uh, are actually sitting in the discord all day right talking to people doing things or at least as much as they can you know even if i'm not in the voice channel talking to them i'll still be uh, in the text channels even while i'm working mm -hmm. and I guess don't take this the wrong way. I'm just trying to see how. What's your take on this? How much part of the leadership are you in in this uh, in this in this picture? How many decisions are you making? I guess. <laughs> so it sounds like so an I think insult, it's actually but... a, I think it's actually a uh, a good question, right? Because I think it's actually not known at all. Uh, a lot of those types of details with the skill. I think there's. Uh, I think there is some perception that uh, I do absolutely nothing, but. Uh, it's that's, that's why I think it's interesting because the reality actually is uh, every single decision that's made in this guild uh, passes through me to so every single one. So when it has to do with uh, recruiting somebody or what we're going to do for the week or what our philosophy is, what our intentions are, uh, those are all driven by me all mm -hmm. the way to the end. So uh, I have individuals that do certain things, but... Uh, <laughs> I don't know, good or bad, right? In a sense, it's a, it's essentially kind of a dictatorship. I think it's the only way to maintain control, right? Because mm -hmm. th there's a lot of things that can go wrong. You know, there's there's a lot of people with a lot of opinions. And although I'm I'm there as much as I can, but I'm I'm not as there as much as I would like to be. 
I still know all of the people in the guild. I, I know what they care about. At least I like to feel I know what they care about. I know what they want, right? Uh, I like to feel like I know what they want. <laughs> and so when, when we go through the decision-making processes, uh, a majority of the time, what ends up happening is uh, I'll be working during the week. Somebody will get trialed. Somebody will make a decision. Somebody will be thinking about what they want to do for the week, right, As uh, in terms of attacking a castle or doing something like that. And then uh, we'll come around to, like, Friday, and I'll finally get a chance to actually read through all the chat and everything. And then, uh, you know, I'll just thumbs up, thumbs down, and that'll be good. From the member point of view, it's hard to tell who's, who's actually... And, you know, I, I'd like to think that they kind of know. But, but at the same time, you know, all right, we... We, we joke about it a lot, right? We make memes about it. You know, the fact that I'm just, I'm never actually there to uh, do a lot of those types of things. But, uh, you know, maybe <laughs> maybe they'll hear that and they'll actually uh, not even believe it. So <laughs> we'll see. Uh, but Snake has been pretty successful, I would say, as a guild. Probably perceived as the strongest for a long, long time. Do you think you run a successful guild? Yeah, I'd like to think so. Mm -hmm. I uh, I don't think that's ever was really our core intention, right? Or like the philosophy of the guild. Okay. I think it was always just focused around uh, not pushing as hard of a requirement on the siege portion of the game or the node portion of the game because the game itself already takes so much time, right? You know, a lot of it really, in thinking about it, uh, is to fit around somebody's, like myself, schedule, right? It's somebody who really enjoys playing the game Right and likes PvP in the game, but doesn't have the time to show up every single day to nodes. Right, mm -hmm. like we have a we have a small percentage of people that do enjoy going to nodes all the time. Right, and uh, you know if people look close enough at our guild, a lot of times we'll drop down to about 80, 85 people during the week just from people that drop to uh, go participate in nodes. Right, essentially that. Uh, choice i think kind of started the whole thing off with that right but that uh, that strategy of dropping guild to node and <laughs> is that all more and, people doing it now oh yeah 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 it's a really common thing and i <laughs> i wholeheartedly encourage it my friend okay at the end of the day if they drop to go through nodes and i get more money so <laughs> okay. i'm okay with that how how is this perceived inside the guild uh so another one of the kind of core philosophies i have with the guild actually is uh we, at least I push as much as humanly possible. And just by looking right now, uh, most people follow it is uh, I don't, I don't like using guild chat and I don't, uh, I don't incentivize at all or push for anyone to use guild chat. I actually, uh, I specifically push against using guild chat in the sense that I'll, uh, I actually just spam the chat so that no one can read it uh, <laughs> in the middle of the day, because at the end of the day, right. We don't we don't need the in-game chat, right? It's uh, it's outdated. It's archaic. It has no real value to us. The what we have is an entire Discord channel that people can talk to each other in and participate in. The only thing the guild chat is for, in my mind, is just to type an X in chat, right, in order to get invited for your group, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, okay. yeah. So so with that said, real quick, um, the thing about that, right, is uh, the main goal, right, is that the community doesn't break because they drop to a different guild. The community is is more so the guild on Discord, right? It's the it's not the guild in the game, it's the guild out of the game. Because we also, uh, and I don't know if you're actually part of the uh, Snake Discord. We, all, I mean, we have more people that are previously uh, active retired players now mm -hmm. than we actually have real members in this guild. And these are all active people that are either playing BDO on a level to where they can't even log in for the weekend, or uh, they're playing another game, but still active within the community. All right. So um, I, I guess you, you're you aiming to create almost like, a, ironically, a community outside of the game rather than like the game itself doesn't matter as much from what I'm, I'm getting. You know, the, that's the thing, right? Uh, BDO doesn't last forever, right? But I uh, I think it's important that even if we go to play something else, right? Like, see, say, you know, Crimson Desert Online comes out, right? And that's the, the next big game that everyone wants to go play, right? Uh, 
BDO for a long time hasn't had a real strong competitor, right? To go mm -hmm. uh, go up against it, to get to get incentivize people to go play it, right? To get them excited. And so, you know, for the longest time it's been BDO, but I I don't believe it'll be BDO forever, right? I I believe at some point and the Discord is actually set up this way already, right? At some point it'll be another game and we'll be playing another game together. And there may be some people that stick back on BDO and still want to play it, right? And so they can retain that small kind of BDO or smaller BDO community, right? While we're also going to play another game. But with the kind of the guild as a whole, right? There's uh, well over a hundred people I would consider that are active members of this guild. So, you know, it's okay. always thinking about the future. From all these things that uh, you're saying, I almost get the feeling that you accidentally, <laughs> this, this sounds like a bad term, but you accidentally became one of the best guild. Like you said, you wanted to build a community and you ended up being one of the top guilds. Was this the, the, the plan or I guess, was this actually accidental? Yeah, so <laughs> uh, and the loaded. Feel free to like. Yeah, I'll I'll give you maybe maybe I should give you a little history of the game. Mm, yeah, yeah, maybe it happened. Yeah. So uh, when the game first came out, right? I uh, I think like a whole lot of people, uh, <laughs> I just kind of popped in the beta and I thought I'd play it and I I wasn't thinking too much about it and then uh, you know it got me ex extremely addicted to the game, right? And so uh, at that time, being I don't know what it was at this point, four or five years ago, right? Uh, I had uh, quite a bit more time available, right? <laughs> I, I was able to actually progress my character uh, a lot faster than I am able to nowadays. Uh, but with that said, right, um, one of my personal beliefs in terms of the game is uh, getting ahead in... I guess what I call them Korean MMOs essentially makes it easy to stay ahead, right? Once you, once you get far enough ahead in these types of games, you can take advantage of, uh, you know, kind of new releases, new experiences and things like that, that, uh, give openings for, uh, I guess, cheaper opportunities. And so my, my main goal in this game was to get myself in a position where when well, my work picked up again, I'd be able to actually kind of just coast along in the game and keep that going without having to put, you know, long, long hours into it. And so my focus there was life skilling. So uh, essentially all I did was life skill in PvP, right? And that was in the original beta of the game. I played a ranger. Uh, once I got to the point I would consider kind of, you know, the end game of the beta release, I started just looking for a guild. I ended up joining a guild called uh, Hostile which uh, obviously you wouldn't know of. It was back on the old Eden server. But they were kind of a, I don't know, a middle, middle guild, middle of the pack type of guild that uh, heavily played into all the politics of the release of the game with castle trading and you know, region holding and alliances and everything like that. Uh, in general, uh, that lasted maybe, I'll be honest, maybe like a month or two at the most. And I ended up, uh, you know, just in the course of playing the game, PvPing a lot, running into a, uh, you know, like a quote-unquote small meme guild called Vision. And uh, Vision was a guild that was ran by uh, somebody named FX. And he had a handful of really close friends uh, that he ran that guild together with. And I would say in total it was about 10 people or so. And their entire purpose really was just, uh, you know, small little guild running nodes, and then hopefully maybe uh, participating in some uh, larger PvP without any politics involved, right? They just wanted to keep to themselves and just keep the guild running uh, just as a group of friends. And so I uh, genuinely enjoyed that. But uh, what we found was that you can't do a lot with 10 people, <laughs> not in VDO, right? You You'd like to think you, uh, you could have that type of impact, but one of the one of the things you come to find in this game very quickly is that uh, body count matters a lot, even if they're you know not at the caliber that one would uh, desire, right? So what ended up happening was, as a group, 
uh, essentially, uh, the guild decided that we would start trying to, you know, recruit some more friends, get some more people in the guild and get ourselves a little bit larger. So, uh, fast forward, maybe another couple weeks to a month and we became a Serendia guild, Serendia Balanos guild. Right. Mm -hmm. And we essentially were a Serendia guild all the way up until server merger. We ended up, uh, as about a 30 to 50 man guild, again, just kind of recruiting some friends and people like that and uh, taking some one offs that would, you know, didn't like the uh, politics of the game and having to deal with uh, being as active as they were. Uh, we ended up sitting on Serendia for a majority of uh, the Eden, I guess, kind of prior to server merge. And so that was that was a lot of fun, right? Just being together and hanging out and you get your own little uh, I don't know what you'd call it, like your own little mini version of the siege game where you have all these guilds that you're enemies with, right? And that uh, don't like you and you don't like them and, you know, you interact with them, but we never really had to interact on a large scale with some of the, uh, I guess, larger guilds at that time, right? Gravity and Man Up uh, were kind of the two largest guilds on Eden. And so essentially uh, sitting on Serendia and just you know, doing our own thing, not really planning to do anything more than that. Uh, we just kept hunkering down and kind of hanging out there and a server merge happened. A whole bunch of uh, guild decisions were made within uh, our guild and then outside of the guild uh, where we got kicked off of Serendia and we said, screw it, let's, let's try and attack Media. And uh, we ended up, uh, actually, I think one of our first sieges that we took the castle, we ended up... Uh, doing it with mana they came to actually help because we had supported as kind of as like a merc guild with them for a while and uh <laughs> the interesting part was when we took media there uh it went about another week or two with the activity being so focused on valencia being kind of the prize possession at server merge yeah that was the thing uh, i guess in every server on you as well yeah and it was for some reason, nobody cared about, about Media. No one really cared too much about Calpheon, right? It was, I mean, 20 guilds dropping on Valencia. And, you know, we essentially just kind of got left alone because we didn't really participate in the politics. Yeah. We kind of just, you know, hung around and didn't really do much. And uh, as a guild, we kind of saw like, hey, there's an opening here. This Media is kind of like a, it's kind of like a Serendia type of thing. Like people don't really care about Serendia. <laughs> Everyone always kind of cared about Baunos for some reason, but they didn't care too much about Serendia either. <laughs> you know, you you put a handful of kind of interesting assumptions together, and we saw this opportunity to just kind of sit on Media, right, and, uh, you know, be comfy. <laughs> and so we're like, okay, cool, we'll just hang out here. And then, uh, you know, a large alliance politics and a whole bunch of drama involved over on the Valencia side. Uh, we'd end up sometimes, right, we'd get kicked off or something like that, and we'd end up... Uh, fighting one of those guilds, you know, it's like we'd fight one of those larger guilds, but on, uh, on a node where the node participation isn't quite as large and we would win a handful of times. You know, you fast forward a little bit, gravity ended up dying, merging into man up. Uh, they tried to do kind of this mega guild, uh, that mega guild didn't work out because, uh, inter guild relationships and whatnot, right. The man up guild was always more of a, uh, casual screw around have fun type of guild and the gravity leadership was always very serious and so uh, that guild ended up breaking apart and uh, i guess the man up leadership right or uh, the man up core ended up not uh, not having a good time with that guild at all and so we actually in time right slowly recruiting a couple people here and there uh, and then eventually with lakari calling it quits right like right around that time uh, we ended up recruiting a large portion of the man up kind of core guild that we were always really friendly with but uh, people like Masilas and bert right uh hunler do you think right? um was it like uh, an aggressive type of recruitment like uh man up dies okay let's get as many people as possible or was it more natural like you know i think i think every guild kind of operates the same way right a guild dies right no matter who the guild is right it could be any any type of guild will die and people go hey this guild died <laughs> you know is there anyone there we care about yeah. right but uh but in terms of man up uh as a guild we were always really close with man up really friendly with man up to where uh we never actually have 
kind of set hard alliances in this guild because frankly we just uh, we don't want to deal with the politics but uh, but I, I would like to believe that when Manup died uh, all of those core players that were in Manup at the time right Mac Bert Hunter is at the end right uh, all those core type of players right they they already wanted to come play with us because uh, at that point we had already fostered this community and I think had this outward uh, impression given off to everyone that, uh, you know, we're really chill, relaxed type of guild that uh, I think would be kind of the closest thing they would look for as a man up member. Uh, if that makes sense. Okay. Yep. And, and, you know, again, it's been a few weeks, right. Or uh, maybe a couple months and we essentially have been just, hunkered down in media where we get kicked out and we try to take it back again. We get kicked out. We try to take it back again. Right. And we'd sit for a while, you know, different things like that. And the, uh, the PVP at that time was so, uh, I think people don't want to believe it. Right. But it was so imbalanced. <laughs> Way back like in the day. Uh, not, it's not <laughs> much different now, but you know, it, uh, uh, it, it was a little more towards gear. I think mm -hmm. than other things, but uh, if you had pretty good gear, right? A majority of the people that played that game at the time did not have any gear at all. And so, I mean, that was a time when if you had like 60, 70 people that all had like really good gear, right? They really pushed hard. They got all the way up to like the soft cap, you know, like a 253 plus, right? They, uh, which is crazy to think about nowadays, but. <laughs> 253 plus right yeah, there. I, I remember i also play since day one right and i remember thinking about 300 ap as like this ultimate meme right that if you iframe and you have 300 <laughs> ap you, you nuke a castle and now if, yeah, you're, I mean, if, like, if you're 300 it's like oh, okay with, with kutum or you know and that's that's a i'll be honest that's a whole another topic we could talk about at some point yeah. maybe but <laughs> but that's something where uh yeah exactly that right you'd have some people that had like 265 and they were gods right it was like like you're like, holy shit, this guy has like a Ted Ogre. He's a freaking god. <laughs> and then, you know, uh, in those days, right, it was still Witch Wizard. But then there was, uh, I think, like Ranger played a pretty decent role there, right? And it was... Uh... There always was that one class. I think that's the issue with PA, right? A PA is in Perlabis. Also PA is in Protected Area, but also PA is <laughs> in Perlabis. They have this... Um, they, they seem to always leave one or two classes that are way too broken compared to the rest. They just yeah. need the... the general meta and you know i think a lot of that has to do with uh the uh kind of metas of the game being different amongst the different regions right mm. yeah that's like, very hard yeah. to balance i don't know if you saw uh and we're going on a little bit of tangent here but i don't know if you saw the siege statistics for uh the kr uh taiwan siege right oh yeah but i mean <laughs> i look at like that witch wizard count and it's like what <laughs> like really Holy shit! Like, what kind of game are these people playing? Because <laughs> I look at like our guild roster, right, for like siege active characters, and it's literally just like little ones and twos, like maybe you know, it's like or I would say more zeros probably on a lot of the classes. Just what I would, you know, what people play for siege. Mm -hmm. I couldn't imagine like these, you know, uh, you know, like the I would I would argue the strongest guild right now, Cho Nation, right? They uh, they're the same exact guild. I mean, they have the same exact uh composition and so if they did kind of that 2v2 type na versus kr type of thing i mean our our guild list like our little pie chart would be like 95 witch wizard right <laughs> and i i think it's one of those things where that would you know again if, if we weren't part of cacao if we were part of the pa originally right i think that would have been really eye-opening for them as a company and i uh, i genuinely believe that it's probably happening uh, Soon. With the yeah, team. yeah. I, I'd wager we're going to fight EU first, probably, cause, just because of the whole um, NAEU thing. But, I don't uh, know. Like, uh, Isn't the, the ping uh, too big of an issue between the, the two servers? I mean, I'd argue the ping is an issue between every server in North America, right? We're kind of on an island think, over here. I think, uh, <laughs> I mean, there's a massive difference, but I think uh, the South uh, America server is the. Maybe I think I've heard uh, they even have the server itself in. In North America. You think we would do like an NASA thing? I mean, geographically, right? It's the closest, I think. 
you know, I don't want to be an asshole or something, but I mean, that would be kind of rough for them. <laughs> yeah, obviously, obviously. <laughs> That's a. Uh, I mean, realistically but, you speaking, know, I think we would, as EU, we would get steamrolled um, as well. But let, let's. Um, I want to talk about like this was a pointer for sure um, that we can talk about later. Let's finish up the um, the, the snake uh, art. Like yeah. So uh, essentially, what happened right is uh, man up died. We ended up taking in a whole lot of man up members, right? Uh, pull out of the core members of man up, uh, and uh, <laughs> I think one of the most important things I kind of skipped over, uh, right between uh, media and man up, I'd say, was uh, the original GM of the guild. It was right around server merge time. Uh, FX. Um, he actually had a, I would say, a large kind of philosophical difference in the way that he wanted to. Uh, play BDO and run a guild. Uh, he actually was not interested very much in the larger guilds. He wanted to just mm -hmm. stay as a small guild, right, with a uh, you know very limited number of members, right. He wants it to be just his circle of friends, essentially, right. And so, with that happening, right around again, right around the server merge in media time, uh, he actually agreed just to pass GM over to me on the one principle that we changed the name, and so. Uh, or one promise, I guess, that we changed the name. And so we actually changed the name over from Vision to Snake, retaining the same icon, right? The same kind of uh, visual of the guild. But okay. Is there, the a, name changed. is there a deeper meaning to the name? No. Or just liked it lol? No, no, it was it was Vision <laughs> and we had a snake. It was Vision and we had a snake uh, icon for the guild icon. Okay. Just kind of just kind of for fun. And then uh, we just changed it to Snake because it was a snake icon. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you know, it's very face not, value. You know, <laughs> be like sometimes that. it's a Christmas snake. Sometimes if it's a turkey snake, right? <laughs> but yeah, no, it's, I think really it's a great name. I think, uh, we'll I think it gives time. off exactly the same philosophy the guild is as a whole, right? It's mm -hmm. casual, not very serious. Doesn't take itself seriously, right? Uh, you know, we're just, again, we just, we kind of just exist and it's worked yeah. out. Uh, obviously being strong, Right. And just being, again, having a strong core, I think has always been one of the most attractive things to people. And uh, I'll be honest, I strongly believe that as a whole, uh, sitting on Serendia throughout Eden, right. And then sitting on Media at the beginning of server merge are the, the main things that attract people to the guild, right. They see success as sitting on a region, although so much of this game, people try to push away from that, right. Um, because you know, there's a lot of that philosophy, at least on NA, and I think it's even heavier on EU, right? Is the uh, castle siege isn't really the most important thing. Nodes are the most fun, right? Mm -hmm. If we can try yeah. to make siege more like nodes, then we'll have more fun. And so, uh, how do you see small scale, for example, in BDO? So uh, I actually have a real, I think I'd say kind of a chip on my shoulder over that whole that whole topic, right? Because uh, one of the things that I think kind of bothers me uh, the most about this game and about PA as a whole, right, is uh, they have this amazing system where people own entire regions, right? Mm -hmm. And for a while, it was good, right? But it's never scaled. You know, grinding's gone from 50 million silver an hour, right? Essentially, like the best you can do to 300. But the siege regions, right, still get the same exact amount of money. Now, I would, I would wholly, I would, I would probably disagree with the majority of the people that play this game when they say that the castle money has no value to it, right? And I can, you know, I can tell you just real quickly, right, kind of napkin math. We've sat on a region almost every single week, right, in this entirety of this game, right? I would say majority of this game we've been on a castle at some point and so i mean if you're operating on uh you know uh, the actual amount of money that we receive right which is uh you get maybe about 30 30 billion silver right for a week on media or valencia right or calfion right they're all pretty similar right i'd, I'd argue they're mm -hmm. essentially the same uh you get about 30 billion silver, right? And which means that every member gets about 300 million, right? And that's where everyone typically stops and they go 300 million. That's nothing. It's an hour worth of grinding. Who cares? Right. But then my argument is, okay, well, let's take 
300 million silver, right? Let's multiply it out by the 100 people. Let's go back to the fact that I got 30 billion silver, right? And then let's take that out for, you know, an entire year. Let's say you do 50 weeks of that, right? You know, then all of a sudden you're at one and a half trillion silver, right? And then let's, let's assume that we've been doing this for the last uh, four years, right? Or, you know, if you want to be conservative, you could say three years, right? We're at about five trillion silver that has been injected directly into this guild. You it's know, like so... one Valencia node, though, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's not much. You know, just you know, with, Valen current, just, just with the current system, yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, you know, the the way people look at that, and the fact that I think people really don't think about that type of fact, right? There's, like, there's also the castle buff now, which I'm sure adds value to it. And and you know, it's, uh, I know you didn't talk to Joyce about it in the interview piece, but uh, the castle buff is pretty close to the same actual net value when you end up doing like the, the hard math on it. It's pretty close to the same amount of money as you would get just holding the region, which is, uh, which is an interesting piece, right? But, but uh, yes, I agree, right? Taking the castle now has an added benefit to it, right? And while I would argue that uh, the castle incentives should be so high, that everyone wants to hold it as much as possible, and uh, I, you know, I'd like to kind of talk a little bit more about that right after this. Mm -hmm. But uh, the thing about it has been we've gotten again, it's like five trillion silver has been injected into this guild as a whole, right? Like you, you know, you can't just look at that and not, you know, people wonder, you know, how does Snake have so much gear? What the hell? You know, this is ridiculous. You know, these guys are obviously all cheating. It's like, well, <laughs> you know, maybe it's the fact that people are literally getting. Right at this point now, an hour's worth of grinding every week for free. They just get it, right? Like you take everyone in this game. Once you're pretty close to the top, right? You only need to make, you know, if you make like a billion silver a week, right? It's about consistency. That's, yeah, it's it's one month of that, and you have yourself a pen crescent, right? It's like that's that's a very serious amount of money that people are getting. You know, that a lot of people just don't do any amount of grinding for the most part, right? They don't do a lot of the kind of easier things to do, right? Like turn in your Imperials and do that type of stuff, right? And you're, mm -hmm. you're looking at an entire guild that's getting, you know, those types of payouts every week. And it's and it's consistent, right? It's a consistent, like, 250 to 300 million silver every single week, right? And it's, again, it's why I laugh about the people that drop for notes because that goes so much against my personal philosophy, which is, you mm -hmm. know, Don't just you keep think, the game, um... fight, fight, when it, fight when it has real meaning behind it. Like they're trying to attack you as a guild mm. but 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 you know it's it's something where i really wish the game as a whole would push right the company as a whole would push to and strongly incentivize the castle right they kind of tried with the drop buff but i mean it should be something where they incentivize people to want to sit in the castle right as mm -hmm. long as they can, right because then that drives the politics it drives the direction of the game right it if somebody holds a castle and tries to hold it as long as they can, then that puts them in a position to where, you know, politics get created organically because people want to kick them out and they want to take it from them. Right. Like one of the, one of the reasons why politics is so easy for us as snake, right. Uh, is a, because we don't really participate in it <laughs> too much. Right. At all. You know, you have to do a little bit here and there, but uh, generally speaking, it's not us making those decisions. It's, it's us sitting on the region and it's essentially the first people that attack us. <laughs> you know, it's like some guilds decide they're going to come screw with us and do something. And, you know, they become our new enemies that we try and screw with. Right. And for the longest time, it's always been, uh, you know, interestingly enough, it's always been one side on NA that's always been screwing with us. Right. And it's, it's such a, I, I think a lot of the other guilds realize that, Hey, these guys really don't like, uh, you know, for us right now. Right. We, we have bad interactions with, uh, like, Black Rose and, uh, I'd say, on a lesser degree, uh, Barcode, right, uh, and, like, Corrupt. But, you know, it's only because these guilds for the longest time have been kicking us out of the region, right? We don't, all the time, we don't get the other side of those, I guess, the NA kind of alliance versus alliance thing. We don't get the other side really kind of kicking us out of the region. Yeah, these people look at us like, oh, you're a lot allied with them. It's like, no, they just don't fuck with us. <laughs> You know, that's it's, pretty uh, it's pretty consistent i mean the snakes only bite the one that attacked them so yeah there you go <laughs> i just gave you the reason for the name the the deeper meaning there, yeah, there that it makes is. Sense. 
Um, I actually want, want to, to hear your, your thoughts about these two things mainly. So I think um, Siege, as it currently is, is kind of flawed, as in, in theory, it should be the, winning a castle should be the highest possible reward uh, for PvP in this game, right? But you are rewarded by being one of the best guilds by not getting much PvP, because you can't do node work. If no one's attack you, you, you're not doing anything. I'm, I'm not sure how the uh, siege scene is right now in NA, but um, I'm sure there's been a lot of weeks, maybe even months, where you just had no fights. So I feel like this very counterintuitive, where the highest reward for being the best is not doing what you love, <laughs> if, uh, if it makes sense. And the second thing is just how AIDS Castle Siege has become. I think pushing chokes, in general, pushing a castle, it's just not very pleasant. It's not a fun experience. What do you think about this? So, so first thing I will say is Succession Wizard is the dumbest thing <laughs> Pearl Abyss has ever done. In terms agree. Of yeah. Stupidest thing, bar none, right? They, yeah, they, obviously, they obviously just did, did not think about the strengths and weaknesses of classes and what drives kind of the core they literally took a class whose entire power was huge damage potential, huge long range damage potential, right? Uh, extremely high uh, support capabilities, right? The only class that has strong heals, right? Strong, uh, you know, you got speed spell, you got mm -hmm. uh, PA, right? And they take this class where their gap, right? Their weakness was mobility. And they just jacked mobility up to like a Sork <laughs> level. <laughs> Like, like, like active defensible mobility, where they're they're literally teleporting back and forth all over the place, essentially like they're a sword. <laughs> and this more. is while retaining every aspect of their strengths that they had before. So the class essentially has no weakness, right? And this is where uh, I think to your point, the suck wiz wizard mains would chime in and say, "Oh no, we're horrible at one v one." No, you're not. <laughs> The class is insanely powerful, even in one v one, right? They they are a very strong class, right? The the really uh, good players, right, of that class that at least uh, don't want to deny <laughs> over and over again because they're scared, right? Would would agree that they they can beat most people even in one v one, right? There's certain classes that, as a whole, magic damage classes struggle with, like striker and mystic, right? But mm -hmm. You know, look at a class like Sork versus Striker and Mystic, right? It's <laughs> it's tragic. As, as a Sork man, right. I, I can tell you it's tragic. <laughs> you know, it's like, the, you know, you can't look at those things in a vacuum and look at them as a whole. And, and that that class is just insanely broken. But yeah, with, back, back to that, uh, the question. With that said, it's uh, uh, one of the things about Snake, right, about this guild, right, and, and my philosophy is I very strongly believe and exactly the thing you were saying, right? Which is that uh, holding a castle should be the most prized thing in this game. It's the most valuable thing in this game, right? And you want to try and hold a castle as long as you can. You should want to try and hold a castle as long as you can. And so I would argue stubbornly, right? Uh, I have pushed this guild to be exactly that, right? I'll, even if, right, uh, kind of openly, it's it's not the... It's not the right way, right? It's uh, in the sense that um, you don't get the PvP that you want all the time, right? I, I very strongly believe that uh, holding the castle should be the end game for every guild, right? And I, uh, I push this guild to be exactly that as much as possible because I, I want to be holding the castle. And I, I'll be honest, I, I very much enjoy uh, Castle Siege, uh, from the perspective of defense, right? Because uh, I think the premise of having a whole bunch of people on wall shooting down, you're trying to siege a gate, right? And you're trying to take the gate is is a very cool thing, right? And I think wizard and ranger and those classes that excel at it, right? They excel at it, sure, that's fine. But uh, I, I strongly believe that the system itself is not broken. I, I think that pushing the chokes are fine. And this is, I think, where I differ a bit. But I think that uh, they haven't moved the dial enough in the right directions, right? I, I think, simply put, if they wanted to make it more entertaining and more driven towards uh, kind of the castle defense being 
a more powerful position type of thing, right? Then they should incentivize it to be multiple versus one type of thing, right? It should, I think the the core number for kind of success shouldn't be a 1v1 on a castle, right? You know, and I, I draw a lot of this kind of from uh, what you would take as kind of like a, a real world interpretation of castle season, those types of things, right? It's, I, I think it should be like two guilds trying to kick somebody out as kind of the, the level field. And in order to incentivize that, right. Uh, they create a situation where, you know, like the castle gate doesn't sit up the whole time, right? Like you have to actually do damage to the gate and take it and it takes time. Right. And there's that interaction where you're in an advantageous position, but they're sieging the gate and they're doing damage to it. Right. The, the very beginnings of the game were kind of like that, where you left the gate down and people attacked the gate for a long time. But the damage has gotten so high in this game and with some of the siege changes, right? It's 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 not really it's not really like an actual castle siege anymore, right? It's mm -hmm. a a really strange kind of situation. And uh I, I think they could really just turn a couple knobs here, right, and essentially try to turn it into something where, you know, you have like two guilds attacking, right? And you can and you know, there's obviously some personal bias here, right? But you can take you can take you can take a guild like ours who literally has right like 15 shies in the guild right uh and by shies i mean they play a shy for siege right and then you know majority witches and wizards where the entire guild is built around trying to hold a choke right trying to hold the castle right and uh all they would have to do is just create a scenario where uh it actually feels more like a castle siege, right? Where they have a whole large platoon of people shooting cannons, right? A whole bunch of things like that. I mean, they elephants actually do things because right now elephants don't really do anything. They're kind of meaningless unless uh, unless you're charging a wall without any sort of siege units near it, right? Yeah, they can incentivize it to where it's like, uh, you know, 200 people versus, you know, the 100 people or 300 people versus the 100 people, right? Because then you get the large attacking force kind of pushing the gate. And uh, this is where I think the attacking side gets very frustrated over that fact of attacking it. But yeah, I, I guess that's where it becomes a little more difficult, right? It should, uh, I think it should be kind of a, a push into the gate and it should take a lot out of you to try and get the gate down. But the feeling when you actually get it down is huge, right? It, it feels really good. But, you know, that's, that's where I think things like shies kind of make things a little bit less fun. And mm -hmm. I'm sure no one's going to make it even less fun with their, uh, it looks like their new ice wall ability. So. It's the ice wall then. I, I, I can think of how you would be able to actually push without PA. That's going to be interesting. So I, I actually don't think PA is important anymore for pushing. I really don't. It's, um, I, have you watched any of our sieges recently? Like, um, no, the one that you've been attacked on castle. Uh, and if you haven't, I, I really highly recommend you find a bot and kind of mm. watch it. It'll give you a very clear impression of what it looks like to siege a castle right now, because I'll be honest, I think we're the only guild that's uh, in a position to where we've built our entire guild around defending those. Right. So I would argue we're probably one of the only guilds that could actually defend and attack right now on a castle because they're genuinely speaking, right. Uh, it's almost impossible to defend a castle right now at this point. It's with the respawn times being as fast as they are. Nothing, nothing matters when in terms of protected area and uh, those types of things because they are literally spawning and running down the choke, invulnerable for half the time, mm -hmm. and then they are literally just like like you ever seen that movie World War Z, right? It's, <laughs> yeah, it's literally like Warming that, in. right? Most of these people don't have protected area. They're they're just pushing, right? It's just bodies of people just pushing, right? And, you know, the shies are there to try and slow them down. And you have a whole lot of other classes trying to slow them down, right? But at the end of the day, it's there. there's no real kind of large protected area pushes anymore. It's just, you know, you're just running at the gate. And, uh, you know. <laughs> Is that fun though? Like, it sounds like just running it down, right? Um... And that's, and again, that's where... Uh, that's where there's aspects to this that I think that they uh, they they turn the dials the wrong direction, right? Like uh, like the respawn time thing is not it's not the type of direction they should have been going because it, it creates a really horrible situation, right? Where you, know, you have to do all those types of things where you are just running down 
the lane. <laughs> but but generally speaking, right, it's a it's a resource battle because the respawn times with uh, recovery centers are extremely significant, right? If you if you actually kill an entire guild's recovery centers, their spawn times are like quadrupled in comparison to yours, even at the early points of the game, right? So you end up in a a pretty hefty kind of resource battle on the side that people don't really pay a lot of attention to, which is uh, making sure your respawns are at the maximum time. But mm. I, I, the meta right now is really strange. <laughs> and that's it's only... Down. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it it's frustrating that that's the best strategy. But at the same time, right, again, I, I think they really just need to turn some dials and get everything set up a little bit better, right? They... Uh, they screwed up with a lot of things. Like when they did that HP change where you get an extra 5,000 HP, mm -hmm. like they're obviously trying, right? But they, I think they just need to really return back to the, the core mark. principles you of what, mark. yeah, of what kind of siege is supposed to be and what you're aiming for, right? Siege units have value to them, right? So increase their value, make them more meaningful. Not, not to the point to where, not to the point to where people aren't even kind of attacking, but I mean, they have towers that they can drive up that do things. Make the damn tower an actual thing that makes sense. Like right now, that tower is so c compacted and so kind of shitty, right? That you just die. Like it's, it's, it's like its own choke. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's it's like why can't it just be a like a a ramp? You know, like a longer ramp or something, right? Just build something to where you can actually you mm. can create opportunities for people to do things, right? Like they made that. Uh, Shit, I bet you might not even remember this thing exists, but they made that freaking like ballista, ballista, right? Yeah, yeah. It's like, what the hell was that? <laughs> what was that for? You know? And they like, keep doing adding stuff, um, and kind of that's that's PA, right? That's, they've always done this. They add some things and just leave it there. Like the and that's where and I, trolls. Yeah, that's where I would argue they really need our help, but they for some reason again, it's uh, I think they've been really focused. Uh, up until I'd argue maybe a little bit recently, they've been really focused on uh, like the Korean meta mm -hmm. and not so much the NA and EU scene, yeah, obviously. right? I think I think that if they really took the time and actually paid attention to what NA looks like as a whole, they would see what it looks like when a region stubbornly sticks to large scale siege, right? Because every other region essentially has given up on it, right? Yeah. It's kind of a taboo to talk about average gear score in BDO. And I guess, can you say what's the average gear score of Snake? And what, what do you think about like hiding average gear score? Is there a reason for it? No, I think it's, I think it's really, I think it's really common knowledge. Uh, I think internally amongst the smaller scale or uh, I don't know, more smaller kind of meta in the game. Like, uh, you know, everyone kind of generally knows what the average gear score is of the different NA guilds, right? Back and forth. But, uh, but no, I don't. I don't think it's a real. I don't think it's a real big secret, right? I think. Uh, so what is it? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's around. I'll be honest. It's around like six hundred seventy, right? It's nothing. Okay. It's nothing insane, like a seven hundred number or something, right? But it's uh It's very high. You know, it's not. Yeah. Yeah, I would it's say not, so. Again, it's. And you said that Cho is a uh, stronger stronger guild right now. Do you know their average? Uh, I think they're yes. pretty much the same. Uh -huh. Yeah, Cho Cho has been, and uh, again, a little history of uh, NA server. Cho and Snake have literally been side by side for uh, the entirety of uh, North America and Eden, right? Uh, mm. In the in the sense that um, we've always been uh, kind of right next to each other in terms of. Uh, I wouldn't say perceived strength, but I would say uh, kind of activity and uh, position in this game, right? Where uh, even on Serendia, Cho was like Cho was like our biggest ally on Serendia, right? It's like we literally go all the way back to the Eden servers, and we would drop on Serendia, and Cho would drop with us to help fight some people, right? If we got a whole bunch of guilds attacking us, right? And so we we we've interacted with Cho uh, kind of on a friendly terms type thing for a long time outside of a large gap in between where they wanted to do this like hard alliance past the region back and forth thing with uh, vertex which was a real dark time okay. <laughs> but it's not here anymore which is good but uh, but with that said they uh, uh 
uh, we've always known Joe very close, and we've always kind of, you know, had had decent relationship with him as a as a whole. Uh, I think for like ninety nine percent of the game, uh, we've always had been perceived as the stronger guild, uh, just based on uh, generally speaking, right? We'd sat in a region for so long, right? We'd uh, we'd had interaction points where uh, you know we we demonstrated our strength, right, in those senses, but. Uh, up until I think very recently, uh, we've always been that guild that uh, I don't know how to say it. Uh, we've put a lot of pressure on a guild like Cho to where uh, they've always had to, uh, you know, show their strength, right, and try to be more powerful than someone like us, right. And as a guild as a whole, that isn't really pushing to be the most powerful, right. It's mm -hmm. one of those inevitabilities that eventually some guilds going to finally kind of push past it right because for the longest time there was a guild like uh, guilds like man up and gravity and things like that that it always uh, they push just a little harder right and yeah. so they've actually got up there and so it's I, i'll be honest i i was extremely surprised we had gone as long as we had okay but <laughs> but generally speaking it i always say it's kind of a joke right i want to be number two i don't want to be number one being number one sucks because <laughs> being number one everybody wants to prove something Everybody mm -hmm. wants to screw with you, right? Everyone wants to attack you and beat you, right? Because they want to show that they can beat you. And, you know, if I could just be number two and, you know, people don't want to screw with me and they don't want to attack me, I'm fine with that. I, I enjoy that, you know, because to me, I want fights to have meaning, right? I I don't want to set up a fight and I don't want to do just some fun 2v2 fight just just for the fun of it, right? I want, I want to sit on a castle. I want people to attack me because they want to attack me and they want to kick me out of the region, right? I want that to have meaning for them and I want it to be meaningful for me, right? It's, uh, you know, I, I want to, I want to organically create enemies. I, I don't want to, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't want everyone to be my friend, right? I, I, I enjoy friendly, right? And being friendly with people, right? And I, I try to keep this guild kind of friendly with everybody. It's, you know, it's kind of the, requirement of not having any hard alliances with anyone <laughs> you know if everyone hates yeah. you it wouldn't work but for the longest time there was a large portion of people that hated us because i would argue because we were just the strongest and we sat on the region a lot and people would look at us and say you know you're you're just a thorn in the side of this game uh and you know if that's disappearing because we stopped becoming perceived as the strongest guild then that sounds great i'm happy with that I welcome my new uh, Asian overlords. Okay. Why? What would you say they're the strongest? Because for what I'm understanding, they have similar gear score and class composition. It's exactly the reason uh, that you would kind of following a typical logic path, right? Come to would be they PvP all the time, right? They go to nodes every week, right? They can constantly are node warring, right? They're constantly uh, PvPing. They constantly have siege fights, right? They are a far more coordinated guild as a whole in every aspect of the game, uh, PvP-wise, except for castle defense, right? Castle defense, bar none, uh, Snake is the strongest at castle defense, right? It's not even close, right? But uh, but other than that, right, you put people put us out in an open field, right? You put us in a position where we have to fight uh, through different means. I mean, <laughs> we get about as close as you can get to... Being in red battlefield, okay. <laughs> you know we, we 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 don't have we don't have a whole lot of strong shot calling, right? Our uh, yeah, our core shot callers, <laughs> you know, our core shot callers have uh, slowly dwindled away. I I was the primary shot caller for years in this guild, and I just decided I, I couldn't do it anymore. It's just too it's too much uh, it's too much stress, right? It's too much work. It's, yep. uh, it's it's a lot, right? And so uh, we ended up recruiting some other people, and eventually we had another individual. Uh, Yem uh, became kind of our core shot caller for uh, again another uh, couple years, right? So in between, there's a gap with both of us together, and then he took over and started doing. I became the secondary, right? But he's since retired, right? And I still refuse to call. And so we have we have a little bit of shot calling here and there from certain people. I try to help. We don't really have like a main shot caller. You know, we, uh, mm. we we only really keep it together by the fact that a lot of the guild is individually uh, skilled, right? They're, they're good players in general. And so they know not to do stupid stuff. And 
we had people keeping everyone together and calling macro objectives. But, you know, again, if you watch some of our sieges, I think like three weeks ago or so when we were defending 1v1 against Barcode, and we were attacking them while in the castle, and we had both our gates down, and we were attacking them at their base. I mean, we just had, we had 20 people essentially sitting back defending because they could spawn in our base, right? And then we had the other uh, 60 people in a big ball just standing outside their base, just running circles around their fort for two hours, or three hours it was, <laughs> literally just killing them as they were coming out. Like, it was, <laughs> we, yeah, we killed about just... three walls in total. <laughs> we didn't really get inside their base. <laughs> we we don't have any cannons, right? Because um, there isn't a big point shooting cannons when you're in a castle, right? And so we've not really focused too much on it. But, you know, <laughs> we're not really built for that okay. stuff. Uh, and actually, I guess, um, follow-up question to this. Uh, at the start of the game, you know, 2016, 2017, it was very common to have very hardcore guilds and uh, have very dedicated players. And I have a feeling that lately it's almost um, the very opposite, as in the more you, you don't care about the game, right? That's, that's the meta, you know. I don't play video, I just AFK and then... Play other games, right? I think you're 100 percent right. <laughs> um, how do you like you personally? Do you still do you feel like you still have flame? Like do you, do you still feel passionate about the game? Yeah. So, so I, I mean, I genuinely love this game. I think this game is is a blast, right? It's it is it has the best PvP system that's ever existed. I think in in any MMO ever, right? It's uh, as a whole. This game is is the best MMO that's out right now, right? Um, in terms of waiting room and things like that, right? If a, if a new game comes out that entices us enough, that's interesting enough to where uh, I feel that it'd be worthwhile trying to actually pursue, right? Then this guild would, I would argue, this guild would probably drop this game immediately, right? It just we're done, moving over, gonna go play this one, right? And I think that's almost solely driven off of my desires, but. Uh, but you know, I I got ahead of the curve real early, and again, I I very strongly believe, and I uh, I don't know how commonly this is held, but uh, getting ahead early in Korean MMOs and this type of game is the most important thing you can do, right? So, getting ahead early puts me in a position to where uh, you know, let's talk about the very beginnings of the game, right? Uh, you know, the the first, you know, like one of the first. Uh, resplendent alchemy stones that was ever made right i was able to buy that because i'm the only one that had money right like like and, I, and by money i mean like two billion silver <laughs> you know like you know and, and uh tech crescents and things like those right uh the philosophy of always having enough money to make sure you could buy an item which at this point now is gone right that that opportunity's kind of disappeared now uh in most cases but having enough money to buy an item if it came up was the most powerful thing you could do in this game. And so what I ended up doing most of the time is essentially kind of the same strategy. And I would argue a lot of the very successful people in the guild and in the game follow that same strategy of uh, have enough money to make sure you can buy anything that's a kind of end game upgrade, right? Uh, you know, you'd almost call it like the Blade Bow Quest strategy, right? So I think he'd like to think he's the only one that did it, but a lot of the strong players did it too. And uh, what that does is that put me in a position where everything I've gotten in this game, I've gotten uh, on the cheap, right? It's uh, the rich get richer. You know, it's it's kind of the way it is. Like I, I look at my gear right now, right, and most of the things, right, like all of my pen armors, right. I I bought those, like I bought pen muskins, like two thousand beginning of two thousand eighteen, I think it was, right. I bought my pen dandy in like two thousand eighteen, beginning of two thousand eighteen, right. And I bought both of those for like five billion silver. Like that's it, right? <laughs> like, like I, I everything I've gotten, I got like that, right? Like I got my heave helmet for like eight hundred mil, right? I got you know, uh, being ahead of the meta, and and uh, getting those items and all those things before the meta kind of gets privy to those types of things is like the most valuable thing you could be doing, right? Like, you know, I bought my centaur belt for, uh, you know, my pen centaur I bought for like. Uh, I can't remember, like eight bill, right? I bought my Sissel for like six. I bought my Often for uh, like five and a half bill, six bill, right? It's 
you know, you look at the total sum value of my gear and you look at someone like me who, you know, <laughs> if I look at my, uh, if I look at my, uh, history and I look at my total monster killed, right. I, I literally only have like a hundred thousand total monsters killed in the entirety of their tracking system because, because I've, I've, most of the, my games I've gotten have been just off of smart decision-making, right. Uh, intelligent decision making and i i don't have uh when i say it uh, i think i'm not like the typical gm right i i have a very high level of gear like i'm i'm essentially maxed out right it's it's all because of those types of things right it's you know making making the correct decision at the right time and also again average guild member in my guild gets like 250 to 300 right i'm getting 500 essentially every single week Right. And then uh, I'm also, you know, I, I'm a habitual life skiller, right? So I'm doing the Imperials uh, every day that I can. And then uh, I'm also doing a whole handful of other life skill oriented things that would make people money, right? Like crates and things like that. I had always done for a long time. And so my, my income as a whole, right. Uh, in my gear as a whole has been from only playing a very small portion of the time, like actually playing an extremely small portion of the time, but uh, inactively playing, right? 24 hours a day, every day for four years, right? I'm always processing. I'm always life skilling. And so it's, uh, I think there's this huge uh, misunderstanding in the game that uh, you have to go out and grind for 20 hours a day, every day in order to actually get to the point that choice is at, right? But, uh, you know, it's a, it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. It's just, you just have to, stick to the game and do the things that get you the money every day. And, you know, if you make 300 million silver a day, right. Just life skilling and turning it Imperials. Right. I, you know, I'll go a month or two and then uh, I could buy another pen accessory. Right. Something like that. I, I still, to this day, uh, get gains, right. Like different things, you know, I, uh, you know, I, I still push to try and maximize my character. You know, there's certain things that come out like the dead God armor and things like that. Right. There's, Every time something new comes out, the most important thing I feel that uh, I can do, again, because I'm still passionate enough about the game, is, you know, get that as soon as possible, right? Get the item while it's cheap, right? Like, uh, there was a... <laughs> I got a lot of grief because uh, there was a whole bunch of people talking about uh, uh, some Dead God armors and stuff being sold on the marketplace. And it's like, you know, <laughs> what do you want me to tell people, right? It's... The price ticks up every single X amount of time, right? You track the time, right? And you know when it's going to tick up. When it ticks up, you get the max pre-order on it. And then eventually somebody's going to sell something like that, right? I, I've essentially, personally, right? I've, I've depended on the stupidity of others in order to better myself, yeah. <laughs> you know? And people look at me like, you never should have been able to get these types of things. There's no way. It's like, well, you know, you'd be surprised how many people uh, back in the day, right, would post something up like a pair of muskin shoes when you did the math on the enhancement value of them and there's no way that anyone should ever sell something for that price right yeah back in you look days, at stuff was, like uh, uh, absolutely not worth it yeah like like pen distortion earrings right and it's like 82 billion silver for a pen distortion earring right the max price that it was prior to the system change right it's like that is way below the actual value of that item like way below like it's not even close you know it's it's frightening to think that anyone would get something like that and think that selling it was the best choice that they should be doing. But some people do that, right? They quit or they don't really care or they just want to get all their soft cap gear and they just got lucky, right? But, you know, there's lots of opportunities there. And so I guess in the long run, there's a, I'm still following that Blade Boquist strategy and it's still working out, right? And, you know, I guess I might be showing too much of the hand here, but if, uh, if everyone was doing it, it wouldn't work, right? But it's, you know, it's not a complicated strategy. Mm -hmm. And how do you see the future of the game? With PA taking over and I guess what they talked about in the Calfin Bowl? I think it's positive. I think, I think for once, they actually are outwardly showing care for PvP, right? They, and you understand the market, right? Everyone understands the market in this game. PvP is not the majority of this game, right? It's those types of things, Black Desert Online as a whole, 
is someone logging in, riding their wagons around, training their horses up, and they're having fun doing that, right? And they're riding their wagon over to Calpheon to go explore the new area, right? And that's like 90% of the people that play this game, right? It's They don't even really get to like full pen Tavala when they play a seasonal character, right? They they just kind of are playing the game a little bit here and there. And so I think for the longest time, they've catered to that large segment, right? That largest segment of, you know, let's get some new life skill and things. Let's set some stuff up to where people can, you know, go ride around on a boat and uh, trade instead of riding around on their uh, wagon and trade, right? Let's uh, improve the storyline when you're questing a whole bunch of things that, uh, you know, this top, I would argue like top 5% of the community, right? Just <laughs> look at like, you know, you run through that content in a day and you you don't care anymore. Like you're done. It doesn't matter. They, they want to digest like the large scale PVP and the aspects of this game that I think a majority of people don't actually interact with. And so as a whole, I think it looks like they're actually starting to finally look at that starting kind of this year, right? And, you know, maybe... Maybe I'm being kind of cup half full with that thing, but you know, a lot of the stuff they were talking about can potentially fundamentally change this game. I mean, yep. the PA nerf, right? It's a huge thing that'll fundamentally change this game, right? And again, it's one of those things where I think it scares the shit out of people. But the meta will, the meta will figure it out, right? And the meta will create the new kind of situation. We'll see what it looks like, right? But that's the key, you know. Like you look at a game like League of Legends, where they fundamentally change items in that game and the meta of that game every few months, right? And that's what makes things fresh. That's what keeps things entertaining, right? Like like the Zerker 200% meta that's just recently kind of reared its head out, right? <laughs> that shit is miserable, right? But but it's different and it makes it more fun for a while, right? It makes it entertaining, you know? If not for me, for all the Zerkers that are playing, right? You know, it's like, there's no reason why they couldn't just rebalance more actively and take a class like take striker right striker 100 percent used to be f awesome it used to be feared right they jump in hit that 100 percent, be completely invulnerable and people around them are dying like crazy right like they could rebalance those abilities up and down right and and make things more powerful right they could take they could take sork 100 percent, right like they could take sork unawakened 100 percent, right and all of a sudden make that thing like a cool ability right they could do with so many things to this game just by tweaking numbers and moving stuff up and down like i feel like they they don't embrace the idea of change they get really scared of i don't know like, like the whole reason they took coupons out right like we don't want people re-rolling the flavor of the month classes it's it's like well a that's not a bad business model right it's i don't I think a lot of people don't mind playing Flavor of the Month. That's why they exist, right? But uh, I'm sure people have problems with it until their class becomes that Flavor of the Month, and then they're happy with it, you know? Just just, just be cognizant of it and just, you know, move stuff around enough, move the pieces around to where other classes get to have their time in the light. You know, it, it it's this game, and it's already too, too late for a lot of this, right? But this game should never have been Witch and Wizard for four years, right? Or I would argue mm -hmm. for at least three years, right? It, it never should be like that. It's just, it's fundamentally wrong, right? It's Other classes should be shining at different times, right? You know, they should have, uh, you know, again, all these different classes like warriors and things like that and Valks and, you know, like, I mean, shit, look at, look at a class like Tamer, like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> like, you, you gotta feel so bad for those people that really wanna play Tamer. And they look at a class like that, and they had a small window, right, where their 100% was really good. But they, you know, it just dwindled away, and they, they didn't really do much to it. They, <laughs> it's just the power creep has gone so heavy that people look at it now and they go, oh, yeah, it doesn't hurt, who cares? <laughs> you know, but they could easily just tweak those things and make them better, right? But, you know, it's uh, it, it's an interesting thing that they, uh, they're so stuck on not changing, but... Uh, but I think they're really starting to think about changing, right? And they're really starting to look at those types of things, right? Like, I would say this 200% nerf is the one of the quickest changes they've ever made, right? Like, this Zerker thing just popped up, and they looked at it that quick, right? They, it, they're they really, at least in my impression, right? They really seem to be paying a lot of attention. And I don't know if you put that on uh, 
people like Choice and a lot of the high profile streamers doing podcasts and talking about things openly and walking through those conversations a lot. I don't know if you put that on people like Enlave for actually having a back and forth with the community as a whole, right? Mm-hmm. I, I don't know. I don't know where you put that exactly, but uh, I really hope it doesn't disappear with cacao dropping off. That's for sure, because it does feel like for once they're actually starting to pay a little bit of attention to NA's uh, opinions on things, right, or EU's opinions on things. Because we we can hope with PA taking over NA and EU, they will listen more, right? They they will have a, a con- direct contact with the community. It's not going to be a middleman anymore. Yeah, and I hope. I hope they take someone like Enlave, right, and they, uh, you know, they offer him like a permanent job to actually stick on the transition, right? Because I know that stuff gets kind of mm-hmm. iffy, right, when they do those types of things. You know, chances are Enlave may end up going to help Cacao with some other game or some other crap, right? But it's just a bummer because for once we just finally got to a position where we have an active person in the community actually participating, right? Like, you know, people laugh a little bit about the about these events he's been running, these RP ones. But really these good. things are genuinely fun. They're genuinely entertaining, right? These are these are not small things, right? Like these are these are very meaningful, and they they give the game a very good impression, right? The people look at it and they like those types of things. You know, I just wish that they had more active community management uh, outside of Enlave, right? It would be really helpful. You know, some of the most successful games, like World of Warcraft, you look at. You know, they have extremely active community management, right? You look at games like League of Legends, right? They have people literally just typing in their Reddits and stuff like that and just talking to people all the time about things. And it just takes those little things, right? Like, you you know, it's the same thing coming like all the way back around to running a guild, right? It's the same thing where I can go into a channel and tell everyone, like, yeah, you know, we got a whole bunch of people attacking us today, guys. It's a bummer. It's whatever. But, uh, you know, that's what happens. You know, like, you just... You, being open about things and telling people, you know, way ahead of time, right? It's that just being open in general, I think, is the most important thing you can do in these types of games. Okay, ah. so thank you so much. Thank you so, so much for um, uh, taking your time to take this interview. Um, it, was, uh, it was really fun. Oh, you also had fun. Yeah, and, yeah. Okay. It was a lot of fun. Nice. Uh, do you have any final words for, for the people listening? Or any shout outs? You know, uh, I guess to be honest, the only shout out I really would put out there is a uh, you know shout out to the whole guild, Snake, right? Uh, and then a shout out to Pearl Abyss for obviously for making a really good game. Uh, again, I uh, I really look forward to the future of this game. And as of right now, right, there's there's no intentions from myself or within my guild of leaving because uh, you know I really think they're taking it in a positive direction, and I'm excited for that. I think the everyone that plays this game as a whole, kind of on the uh, top level, are excited for that. You know, change is good, and so I'm really looking forward to all those changes. All right, perfect. So um, thanks for joining me, and um, yeah, see you in uh, in the global siege, I guess. <laughs> looking forward to it. Yeah. <laughs> Hope you guys bring witches and wizards. <laughs>